So specifically, I work with DIPG, uh, diffuse intrinsic pontine gliomas, and what we've seen um, described earlier today is just uh, located within the pons that makes it a difficult surgical access. So I'm not a neurosurgeon, but for the because it's not surgically amenable to resection, um, you really try these other treatments. And the intricate blood supply that goes to the pons, um, intact blood-brain barrier, and really the uh, lack of imaging for drug biodistribution, those are the current challenges that we face now. So that's, uh, we're, we're trying to uh, address it in both the clinical and research fronts. So from a clinical perspective, we have a pilot study that's registered on clinicaltrials.gov, and it's for the intra-arterial chemotherapy for recurrent DIPG. And in that pilot study, uh, we administer intra-arterial melphalan, a chemotherapeutic agent, directly into the basilar artery. And so that idea stems from our research with retinoblastoma and success with giving local chemotherapy targeted to the tumor. So by enabling um, more precise delivery and more local delivery um, to the artery that supplies the pons and, and the brainstem, that we're hoping to achieve uh, better delivery that way. Uh, along with standard of treatment, most children are treated with radiation therapy and then they get whatever regimen that um, people are trying now. But we've chose the time of recurrence for our study for the intra-arterial delivery because typically at the time of recurrence, uh, the tumors manifest uh, enhancement on MRI and the enhancement on MRI is an indication that the blood-brain barrier is, is disrupted in some fashion. and so with using the intrinsic nature of uh, blood-brain barrier disruption at the time of recurrence, we're hoping that the intra-arterial delivery methods uh, will en enhance, um, enhance that. Part of the issue is, well, we can deliver the drug easily with, uh, from a technical standpoint, you know, through standard neurointerventional procedures with uh, guide catheters and microcatheters and, and go selectively to the basilar artery, which is right there where all the blood supply is. But at the same time, once we deliver the agent, uh, you don't really see it going into the parenchyma and you know crossing the blood-brain barrier. So it's this um, lack of the drug biodistribution imaging. So from the research standpoint, I work with my colleagues uh, that are here also with me today, uh, Drs. Walczak and Miroslav Yunowski, and we work to create this sort of um, MRI, neurointerventional MRI platform. And so from an angiographic standpoint, I can place the catheters into my selected targets, and then we transport our animal to the MRI scanner, research scanner, and then when we inject contrast or any kind of agent through the microcatheter, we're able to see and predict where is the perfusion territory. And then we are able to titrate based on rate of flow or catheter uh, location, you know, where exactly is it going to go. So it gives us that visualization of the parenchyma to be perfused. So that will allow us to both, you know, predict the area of perfusion. Uh, if we want to disrupt the blood-brain barrier with mannitol, we can do that. And then um, afterwards, we've actually given the drug that we're giving clinically, and we can see uh, from our studies that it does cross and it correlates with the area that we've predicted. So that's really an exciting area of research for us because we have a an animal model that you know simulates the same blood supply and that we're able to use these MRI techniques to predict and titrate you know infusion rates so that you get a more localized territory. We're the first group to be doing intraarterial chemotherapy specifically for DIPG. In the interventional neuroradiology community in which I work, uh, there are a few centers who do intraarterial chemotherapy uh, for other brain tumors, but it's not widespread. And we're the only ones who do it specifically for DIPG because we have a specific ans uh, answer to address. So 
So it's pilot study, so that means initial um, small study at first. And the, I mean, the, we've only had two children enrolled so far and our target is five. And the reason why it's small is because we really want to see um, and document that there's initial technical safety and tolerability of the procedure because you've seen many of these children, you know, their brain stem is diffusely enlarged and we don't know by really giving the chemotherapy right directly at that target will they be able to tolerate it. So we've seen and demonstrated the technical safety and initial tolerability, but as far there are so many questions that remain unanswered as far as drug of choice, dosing regimen, and treatment strategy. But uh, initially, we've seen the tolerability and, and technical safety, so that's the first start. So, no, it's, it's similar to any of our standard neurointerventional procedures, so an cerebral angiography. So, patients are asleep and we go through the femoral artery in the leg and we bring up a catheter into either vertebral artery. Um, it will depend on which one is bigger or, or um, if they're equivalent or co-dominant, we would go on one side one session and one side the other because ultimately the two vertebral arteries join to make the basilar artery. And then uh, we bring a small microcatheter through that catheter in the vertebral artery all the way up into the distal basilar artery. And then I infuse the chemotherapy by, by hand and it sprinkles the territory that is supplied um, from the basilar artery and then all those innumerable little branches from the basilar coat, the pons. Absolutely, absolutely. So I think that that is, you know, we talked, there was a lot of um, convection enhanced delivery that was d discussed today. And um, those are, they have seen some, some promising results, but it is more invasive because that is, involves catheter placement through the brain. Ours is intravascular uh, through the blood vessel, and then when we're done, we take everything out and then we just hold pressure at the femoral access site. So from a minimally invasive standpoint, that is a huge advantage. But what remains you know, for us to see is, is, is it efficacious? And I think a lot of that is going to have to um, deal with improving the imaging, so that MRI platform to see where is the drug going. And then also um, what would really help be helpful would be after treatment would be tissue for, for histological analysis to determine like was the uh, tumor treated well and if we know that it's, it was treated well or responsive then we could say that this method allowed the drug to enter and it did um, have some efficacy but that that's really difficult to know now in the absence of histology and uh, advanced imaging. The ultimately tried to cure it you know we would we would need uh, the optimal drug, which is, I guess, the whole basis of this this conference. You know, choosing the, the right uh, drug that would drug or other agents. You know, mRNA viruses, any any kind of. I guess you could just say therapeutic agent because it doesn't have to be a chemotherapy agent. But it's it's combining everyone's specific ec areas of expertise. You know, the delivery routes, which one is going to be best, and then uh, targeted agents. So we are currently working on improving our imaging of the agents. So um, we are you know, continuing with our clinical trial of delivering the chemotherapy and seeing if, if the children tolerate it and if we see some initial efficacy. And at the same time, we're improving our imaging on the MRI side so that we can, at the same time as the procedure, um, watch the drug go through and then being able to detect the drug in the brain parenchyma because then you can know uh, is it a failure of the drug itself or is it a failure of the delivery method that the drug doesn't get to the target. I would say that uh, intra-arterial chemotherapy for DIPG is a promising alternative and we have shown that it is technically feasible and initially tolerable and, and from a technical standpoint safe but there are so many questions that need to uh, be addressed as far as uh, correct drug 
dosing regimen and treatment treatment schedules you know um, but one way that will really help doing that and a start is to develop uh, better imaging and the, these combination platforms like uh, neurointerventional platforms where you combine multiple modalities I think that's a great place to start